Hi everyone, Diane here, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you a new set of paints which um, Kuritaki have sent me. This is a great, um, wonderful achievement for me actually because it's the first time that Kuritaki, who I've been recommending for ages, have actually taken it into their heads to contact me and say would I like to receive a sample of their paints, one of their new things, uh, free of charge and uh, to review it for them. And so I said, oh yes please, and they sent me this. Um, this is a set of what they are calling granulating colours and um, they are in a pan just like the ones which we are familiar with, the starry colours, which uh, we've mentioned lots of times and I'm just going to put them there a second while I talk about them and take my jacket off because I'm getting hot. Um, when you buy these, and oh, by the way, they're on Amazon, they're now available and they are um, about 20, <coughs> excuse me, about $24 for the set of five. Now, when you buy them and they arrive, you'll look at this and you'll say, oh, there's an empty pan there. Why? Oh, they forgot to put the paint in. Uh, but no, they didn't. And when you turn it around and you see here, it says to be used for dissolving the colours in water. And they make quite a big um, fuss about how much water you need to use to make these things um, bring out their beauty. And they're quite right, of course, they ought to be. That's not that's not an original mark, that's me because I've been trying them out. Um, of course they're right, they know what they're talking about. And what the thing is, you look at this and you say, hmm, five identical pots of brown paint, eh? And you think, well, it says Aurora red, Aurora pink, Aurora orange, Aurora blue, and Aurora violet. Aurora because they are implying that they're like the Northern Lights, you know, the Aurora Borealis. And uh, so that's the thing, the mood they're trying to get you into. And they're trying to say, oh, it's going to be all ethereal and, and, and magical and all that stuff. So whether or not it is, is entirely up to you to decide. Um, but the thing about this is it's not enough. It's a start, but it's not enough. Personally, I would prefer to use a palette like this one, um, my daisy-shaped palette with its separate sections. The separate sections are really important because you're going to put a different paint in each one. Otherwise, this won't work. Um, or you could have one like this if you're lucky enough to have one of these, which is great because it's deeper at one side than at the other. So you can put the paint in here in the well and then just draw it forward a little bit and you'll see why that's important in a minute when I show you my other preferred way, which if you can get hold of some of these little dishes here, you can buy them online now. Amazon has uh, quite a few people offering these. I think they call them dipping dipping bowls or something like that. They, they're they sold for, you know, Chinese Japanese food sauces and things like that. But these ones were handmade for me a long time ago, but they are so useful because what we're going to do is we're going to find a brush and um, we're going to pick up some water. I'll get the water down here, move things around a little bit. Um, yeah, and take a brush, take some water and take one of these little dishes and then we're going to dip into any one of these and put it in our little dish or if you're using one of these palettes into one of your sections and you need to pick up a fair amount of this. Now this is Aurora Violet and it's the, the cleanest and best of the colours I think um, we'll look at all the others in a minute and then we're going to add water to it and you can either dip into your water reservoir jar or then the, another, another way of doing it is to go for the spray bottle approach and just spray some water in and then you swish it around a bit like this. This is all recommended behaviour by the manufacturers. If you read their Amazon listing or on their website, or if you <coughs> talk to the people at customer service, <coughs> what's the matter with me this morning? I don't know. Um, 
And after a little while, you'll start to see the colours separating out and it will transpire that there are two colours in this dish. And just to prove it, I'm going to reveal to you what happens when you let it stand overnight. This one is this one. No, uh, yes, uh, violet, yes, that is that one. This has stood overnight and you can see the two colours in there, the blue and the red. And this one will do the same thing. You can see already it's starting to separate. Now, <laughs> this is going to mean that um, unpredictability is the watchword of this paint because there is no way on earth that you are going to be able to control what happens. I will show you the result of having painted with that. It's quite interesting, actually. And uh, you may or may not think that this is something you want to play with, but if you have any, um, if you're a bit bored with your, you know, existing paints. Um, so what I did here, this is a piece of um, the famous Meaden watercolour cold press paper on a block. I wetted a rectangle all the way around on here and then I took this, this paint, and I just literally did a wash over there and then I left it alone. And this is a case where you don't want to use a hairdryer. If you use a hairdryer, you're going to spoil the effect or change the effect at least. So I left it overnight and when I came down in the morning, uh, this is what I saw. And it's quite funny, it's quite cool actually. It's got a little border around the outside edge, as you can see, where the blue pigment has migrated all the way to the edges. And then the rest of it is a kind of um, a mixture of pink pigment and blue pigment. And it may or may not float your boat. You may like it, you may not like it. You may love it, you may hate it. But it's, it's a thing. <laughs> And that to me is probably way number one, first way possible of using these paints. And what I did with it when I did one of those yesterday, I spent the whole afternoon playing. Um, I um, thought I'm going to wimp out here. So I did a background exactly like that. Then I painted a bird using my Michael Harding paints on top. So this, I could control because it was regular watercolour paint. Uh, the background, I let it just do whatever it wanted. And I think it's quite nice, actually. It's an easy way of doing an effective sort of almost bocky, really, almost like a bocky background. Not exactly, but you could probably make it into a bocky background if you dropped blobs of water or paint into your wet wash. So that's that's that. And the other thing I did with it as well, I did another one similar. I'll show you that one now. That I did, same idea. I did the background and then I painted the bird using one of these colours, more or less uh, full strength. Not exactly full strength out of the uh, pans, but pretty close. And so that's what I got there. So it's kind of monochrome and I think that worked quite well. And then I went in on top with a brown fine liner. Um, the one I used was not a bleed proof one, so it's a little bit fuzzy in places, but that didn't matter because it's only a tryout. So that was that was my second um, exploration. And then um, I can also show you, I'll show you this. This is the same background on a uh, hot press paper. So those two are cold press and this is hot press. And then once, while it was still wet, I put in some sort of feathery shapes. I, they were just leaf shapes actually, but they bled into feathers like that. That was um, the, uh, um, Michael Harding Quinacridone Purple. And I just put that on top and that's, that's what I got. So that's also a really interesting background. And that one I think could easily be developed into something that you used for mark making or, you know, uh, mark making or um, 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 doodle type, you know, uh, 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 what's the word? Reverse colouring book type of thing. So, yeah, uh, that's interesting. And if I think you can probably see the specks of colour. There were two different ones there. This one's orange. This one's pink. That was, uh, that was those ones. So that would have been 
not that one, but that would have been this one. I think that's the pink one, yes. That would have been that. And the one on this side would have been this. And that's how they separate out naturally. I didn't do anything except what I did here. As you can see, that's now starting to separate out and overnight it evaporates a little bit and leaves you with, with that. And of course, then the thing you can do with these once they are separated, you could have a dish of this um, sitting there and you'd use that liquidy. And then if you wanted to paint over the top of it, you can go into one that's separated and you can literally just pick up the orange pigment, for example, you know, and then you could paint into your background and it would be, um, what's the word? It would be harmonious. It would, it would, um, uh, it would go. I can't think of the right word. It would be, um, it would, it would, it wouldn't clash. It would, it would work. See? So you could do that. Um, and then you could build it up from there into something, something more complicated if you wanted to. Just a thought, you know? Um, and then what else did I want to show you? Um, this is, I, I should probably do this next. This is the swatch of them swatched out. This is them in order. Obviously there's nothing in that one. Uh, this is what they call red, Aurora red, pink, orange, blue, and violet. Now you have to suspend your reality here because <laughs> this is not orange. <laughs> it doesn't look orange at all. And that's what happens when you just pick up some paint, put it on here, and then swatch it out in the normal way. That's why it's green. And if you look really close, you can see a little bit of orange here, but that's because I swatched it without doing it the right way. I didn't do it right. Um, that was what I got, basically green. Um, this one's blue, that was blue and pink. So that would be this one, here. no, that, not that one, that would be blue. This one is this one. And um, red, that's not red. That's not red, that is something else, but that one is, um, hang on, I wrote it on the side, violet, orange, must be this one, pink, and ah, here we are, that's red, that's that one. So those are the two colours that make up this. And if you do it properly and make it wet, you will get a mixture like I showed you at the very beginning, like that. A sort of blurry, bocky, uh, evocative, magical, call it what you like, background that you can paint over. So there we are, that's what it is swatched out like. And then next thing I'm going to show you that I did yesterday, I was very busy. And you can, of course, pause your video anywhere along this if you want to copy what I did um, and so on and so forth. This was the first thing I did. And um, so I was using them in the way that I normally use paint. Uh, so therefore, some of it is showing the benefit of these um, granulating colours and some uh, parts of it not so much. Um, but here I just picked it up with quite a lot of water and I got a nice mix of green and pink coming out there. That worked reasonably well. That was literally my first stroke. And then I went on to continue with some flowers and butterflies. I'm not sure, but it might be the case, and I won't know until I try again, that this might have worked better on this piece of paper than it did on the Meden, because this is um, arches. This is Arches, 100% cotton, watercolour, uh, 140 pound cold press. Same characteristics as the Meden, but it's Arches paper. So maybe it just re reacts better with the um, paint than the Meden one does. I don't know. Or differently. Anyway, it might be a little bit more sensitive, if you know what I mean. So I was quite pleased with that. And then I did some outlining. I used... Um, a brown pen there as well because I sort of thought black might be a little bit too strong so that's that one then I did the same thing exactly on a piece of Meden um, I think it's pretty similar pretty similar 
and I put some gold on that as well because I thought that would be nice. Um, there is a sort of muted kind of um, effect going on on these. They're quite low, low impact. They're not exactly what I would call bright, um, but they're quite pleasant. It doesn't look like this, does it? No, it doesn't. It doesn't look like that at all, but that is what I painted with. Uh, then this one, this is on a piece of Bockingford, 140 pound cellulose paper. And I thought I would try out this. And I think this could well be one of the most successful uses for this paint. I painted squares and actually these were four different colors, although the backgrounds, they look fairly similar. But um, this was, this was the, uh, this was, this <laughs> that was the one that looks more green. Um, that must have been orange. Yes, that's right. That was the orange. And then the next one is the pink, I think. The next one is the red, I think. I'm not sure. And then the last one is probably the violet. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's the blue. It's those four. That's right. I remember now. Didn't do the violet because I thought, ah, it's a bit strong. So anyway, I made squares of those four colours and then when they were dry, I started to just do some embellishments on that. And I think that's quite fun, don't you? So where you go over the paint that's the first layer with the second layer of the same paint, same exactly. So out of the same pot, one layer, let it dry, go back to the same pot, go over it again with these uh, leaf uh, designs and dots and bits and pieces and you get a much darker colour there than um, what's underneath because you've got twice as much pigment and it works quite well. I, I was quite pleased about that. Obviously you can also, like with this one, you can use the paint that you're painting on top with, you can use it straight from the pan and that's what I did there, that was straight from the pan, it's much darker. Um, but either way, you're, this is clearly just two layers of, from the same dish. And this one is one layer from the dish and then the painting on there using a fine brush, finish brush and uh, paint more or less straight from the little pots, the little pans, you know, the, the original here. So that's, that's that. I'm going to show you me working on it in a minute, um, working on something. But before uh, I do, I want to show you this just to show you that you can do the kind of painting that I normally do. This is a couple of dragonflies and I used these paints to create that and I'm going to try and do that again now with you. So um, I'll show you then how I did it and what I used. So I'll turn you off for a second, reorganize my workspace and come back and do that. So, okay, let's get started on this one. I'm going to use a size eight round brush from Craftmo. Going to be in the new sets coming out next, probably next January. Uh, but anyway, any size eight round, I tend to use a draw well, if not this one, or else a Princeton Aqua Elite is my preferred. So uh, I've wet the brush and I'm gonna start with this butterfly up, uh, dragonfly up here. And I'm going to pick up some of this color, which is, I think this is the violet one. Okay, and you can see the two colors mixing together as I do that. And then I'm going to be fairly kind of loose about this. And I've, I've drawn a little bit of an outline, um, but I'm not necessarily going to be filling in the gaps uh, between my lines. I'm just going to drop it in like that and then you can either, you could swap to another colour for the second wing uh, or you can stick with the same one. And uh, you can always lift it out a little bit if you think it's too much. And in this one here, this is kind of a bluish thing. So we'll just, just leave that. And then the thing is with this, it's really important not to um, interfere with it. It's got to settle. It's got to settle of its own accord to where it wants to go. And then you can um, go over the top of it and add things, which is what I'm going to do when it's when it's dry. I'm going to do another layer of paint. And so then I'm going, I'm going to then go into my little pan here. I hope you can see that. 
you can't. Uh, let me put it here. So you can. That will be uh, the orange. I'm going to try the picking up and let me find a piece of paper so I can test it. Yeah, that's going to be a darkish kind of colour. It's not what it looks as if it's going to be. But we'll put um, some eyes and a body and then paint the seg segments like this and you can get obviously a, a mixture of colours as you go down like that. So that's fairly effective, I think we could say. And uh, it doesn't matter if that's going to bleed a little bit, it doesn't matter at all. Um, you can probably use the point of your brush to draw in the legs or whatever they are. And the eyes can be kind of enhanced. And you can come back in on the second layer, make it a little bit darker if you want. That's just the first layer, so it's not finished yet. So I wash out my brush and go to a different melange. So let's try this one. We've got plenty of orange in there as well as the green. And let's see what happens in this one down here. Sometimes when you put it in the first strokes, it just looks like nothing. And but then, as I say, it it moves around and separates on the paper. Now, what well, the paper I'm using here is uh, Canson XL um, mixed media mixed media paper, and I think that might work quite well for for this kind of thing. Um, maybe I'm going to do the, this one in blue over here. Uh, yes. Well, well, I thought I was. <laughs> See if I can find something a little bit more bluish. Oh gosh. Yes, well this is what's going to happen. You think you're picking up blue and it turns out you're picking up neon pink. But uh, whatever. So we'll do that there. And I'm not making any effort to do any kind of particular shape on the uh, wings because because I don't think I want to. So let's let's see what this red comes up like when I try try it straight from the pan. Yeah, that's kind of dark color. That's what I'm looking for. So we'll put in the head and then the segments. That's quite interesting, that's quite fun. So I'll do the same thing with the other one. I think that colour probably worked a little bit better. So we do that. And then we can see here that it is definitely separating. And so if we want to, we can now add some more color. And you could, at this point, you could go to your ordinary paints and you could try adding um, non-granulating or non-separating uh, paint to enhance it. Or you can just go back to the ones you've used already and just put little touches here and there um, along top edges of the wings. In theory, if you, if you do this um, sensitively enough, you should be able to get something that looks vaguely transparent, shouldn't you? Perhaps better than um, ordinary watercolour for that. I thought I thought this paint might be quite good for insects in general. Time will tell. Um, and so this one is probably a bit wet still, but, you know, time is of the essence. So let's just do that. Just dropping it in in various places and letting it 
do what it wants to do. And um, I'm going to have to try to, I think, shall I use a uh, no, uh, smaller brush, perhaps for the legs, antennae or whatever they are. They don't have to be really strong, do they? Um, and then we can, we could perhaps add some darks using the paint, but I tell you what I'm going to do. My preferred method for doing these dragonflies is to actually enhance them using some pencil. I think it's quite fun. And what I have here is a Stettler Karat Aquarelle. It's just a watercolour pencil, um, water soluble, and it's uh, very uh, strong in the way it interacts with water. So when you touch the water, you get these amazing, and I, I find them very interesting, um, dark, dark marks, which um, to my eye anyway, really enhance the light colors of the dragonfly. So I've used this technique often to do dragonflies. So I'm going to sh shade the bottom side of the um, body there. And if you want to, you can um, pick up a, a wet brush and just let that darken. It's just because it's watercolour pencil, it goes much darker when you, when you actually wet it. And you can do the same up here as well. You can brush it out. In other words, you can have a, a jolly good play with pigment, letting it uh, wander around until you make a picture that, that you like. And you, you don't want to spoil the translucent effect with this pencil, but it is good for making eyes. So we just put a couple of eyes in there. And then, oops, wrong brush. That one wasn't wet, so then we make the eyes wet. And you can use some of this black for the legs as well. Yeah, wet those eyes as well. And when it dries, it, uh, it'll make much more sense. Put the eyes on this one, and then we wet the eyes, and I can sharpen up the legs. And we'll just do a little bit of line work here, and you can use this to indicate vaguely the veins on the wings if you want to. I'll just leave it kind of crinkly, or you can put water on. And then we've got this one. So I think um, I think that's worked reasonably well. And we might want to, at this point, think about just picking up a little bit of spatter, uh, just a little bit of blue, or whatever color that feels like it's gonna to be today. And uh, just do that. And of course, if you wanted to, you can put things like, you know, you can just draw in a background which might be um, 
reeds or something like that. Just just put some lines behind the, the dragonflies to give it a bit of context if you don't want it to be just completely abstract. And I think this paint would be quite nice for that because it will obviously dry in different colours. And put some leaves and things down the bottom here if you want. Whatever you feel like doing. And then we'll wait and see what happens and how that looks when it's done. And of course you could also, if you wanted to, um, paint some sky in the background just by picking up some of this blue that's dissolved here in your little dish or your palette. Um, so that's another thing you can definitely do with it. And I think I'll leave it like that. Um, it's nice to have them sort of smudgy. Thank you, Remy, for your cockaroo doodly doo. So that's interesting, isn't it? As I said, they're on Amazon now, $24 uh, roughly for the five. I know that sounds a little bit pricey, but uh, if you're looking for a gift for somebody who's got everything, I don't think you'd go far wrong with that. Most people would be quite interested to receive something like this as a present, I would think. I know I was when uh, um, Kuretake sent them to me. I was just going to dab something off. And now I can't see what it was. Uh, oh, no, wasn't that uh, that, was it? You can always dab things off if you, you know, if you go a bit loose. Um, oh, here, that's where it was, yes. Um, yeah, so uh, the, there'll be a link in the description below the video uh, to go to our Amazon link for this product. And um, if you do buy it via that link, just to remind you, that does help us a lot. At the moment, um, Amazon give us a small um, commission on anything that's sold uh, through one of our links, which helps us to keep the channel viable. And you don't pay any extra. That's the great thing. So, you know, Amazon are paying our wages, so to speak, but not, not technically they're not. Um, anyway, I'm going to let you go now. So there we are. That is my efforts of the day with this paint. Um, I think that's a great way to use them. There's the swatch. They're obviously nice for sort of um, Art Nouveau, uh, vintage style, butterflies and things like that. And this, I think, could definitely be developed into an idea for something abstract and quite fun to do. And I think I'm going to use this background today for my bird painting, which I'm going to put in the short. Um, probably won't be these birds, but don't you think they're quite fun? I don't think they would be bad birthday cards, would they? Something like that. So there's food for thought, everybody, for today. And um, yeah, so have fun. And um, give yourself an early birthday present a late Christmas present, or just a because present. Gansai Tambi, Kuritake, granulating colours. Yeah, not bad. So I'll let you go and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now, everybody. Bye bye. <laughs>